So you want to learn parkour, but you're not sure where to start. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to vault over an obstacle. The first vault that I'm going to demonstrate, and each vault that I demonstrate today, and I teach you, will have progressions. So no matter what skill level you are, you will be able to discover your own limits, and you'll know how to push past them to improve yourself. First things first, whatever vault or box or obstacle that you're going over, you want to make sure that you can support yourself on it. So start by just making sure that you can plant your hands on top and press. If you notice how my feet are touching with my toes and I'm supporting my body, my feet aren't flat, I'm not letting my knees or my hips rest against it, and my shoulders aren't high by my ears. You want to support your body and practice control. Now if that's pretty easy, the next thing you're going to do is go into what I call a safety vault. You start in your press, you can go one foot up, and it's very important that you get your foot up. Using your knees is slow, sloppy, it's painful, and it doesn't take much more effort to get your foot up there than your knee. So get your foot up there. If you bring your left foot up, like I did, then you're going to lift your left hand up like this. If you do it with your other foot, you lift the other hand. That hand that's up is going to be used for balance. Now with that, you support your body with your hand and you kind of push with that leg and just make sure you can get your other foot up on top. Notice how I don't lean back and I'm not leaning too far forward. Practice that control. If it gets scary from here, go ahead and step back and then push away and start from there. Now if that's pretty easy for you, then you go ahead and go one, two, three. And instead of bringing that foot and setting it up on top, you're going to reach that foot all the way over. And as your foot goes through, you're going to point that foot out, push your hips forward as you push back with your hand and back with that foot that's on top. So. On this side, when you don't need the jump and press to start here, you can start walking into it as you reach, lift that leg, and sometimes even get a good jump off that bottom foot here. Then you go through, push with the hand, push back with the foot, and you come out to a walk. The reason why I come out to a walk is because let's say if I'm being chased by someone, I don't want to go like that. That one small moment stops me as opposed to if I was to come out that way saves you a lot more time so if you're going for efficiency that would be a good tip to remember after you gain some control over it you're going to work on doing it faster and faster so work on going up plant foot step and follow through getting more control over the support of your hand and foot getting control of that other foot stepping through and making sure that you're able to keep your chest up and breathe the one thing you don't want to do when you're moving is holding your breath you hold your breath you move, everything's gonna be a struggle. Ugh. But when you breathe, breathing naturally helps you relax. And that's what you wanna do through movement. If the vault box is pretty high, let's say you can't jump up to it, and you have to start from your press, but you feel like there might be a faster way. So if you feel better bringing, say, your left foot up, then you're gonna step with your right foot on the flat side of the wall first. The reason why? You go, step, plant, step and over. Using that step gives you a little bit of a lift and that lift can help you scale over that wall faster and if you take it into consideration how fast this is compared to this, efficiency. But breathe. Don't forget to breathe. This next one is called a reverse. Now the real reverse vault involves you going backwards as you're traveling over. You're going to start with the same setup. So, taking that reverse ball into consideration, you're going to go to this position here again. From here, you're going to bring that hand next to the other one, and you're going to turn your butt up in the air and point that knee down. All right? I'll do it on the other side so I'm not sticking my butt in your face. So, starting position, hand to hand, butt out, knee down. Your knee does not touch that box. Support your body. From here, just by going in this motion, you are turning in a direction. You're going to follow that direction and continue that flow. So if I turn this way towards my right, I'm going to look over my right shoulder and look at that foot that's hanging down, and I'm just going to lift that foot over as I pivot on that bottom foot, and I look all the way over as my foot trails to the other side. So in this direction, one, two, three, and step. 
The important part to remember about this is to make sure that you're really able to see where you're going, but focus on staying on that vault box as long as possible till that foot touches the ground. If you guess, that's where you could possibly land with your chest off balance, and you could do one of these and stumble. You want to focus on control and keeping your chest as much above your feet as you can as you're coming off of that box. As that gets easier, you can work on bringing your feet together. So let's say you go here, and you bring both feet together and look over that shoulder, then you push with your hands as you bring your feet around the side. That's another way you can progress. And as you get more agile and more control, if you're pretty springy, you can go up, two, turn, and down. And if you notice, I would try not to land with my feet together. I try and land up with them separated so I can step out. Because if I was being chased, I don't want to have to do that. I would rather go and continue running on. So if you're going for efficiency, that would be a good tip for that one. Now as you get more control over it and you want to go faster, work on pushing and supporting with your hands more and feeling how you lift your hips up. The higher you lift your hips and the more you can support your hands, you can kind of feel a slight hang time where you don't actually have to always drop on top, where you might even be able to control kicking your feet all the way over. Now when you do that, still make sure that you're looking over your shoulder if you're going for the reverse, or just make sure that you step your feet out to the side. It can be a little bit quicker in going over as you build more control and stability. Now the last fault that I'm gonna teach you guys in this tutorial is kind of like a safety start to a dash finish. I'm not sure if there's a name for this. However, this is what it looks like. Just like so. What it can progress to is that. And when you guys go up into that starting position, you're gonna go just like you're going through like a safety ball. It's good to get that foot in front of you before you start this finish. That way you gain that control of what it's like to have your hips up, your feet out, and hands planted together. Now you can start with two hands in front, but this vault finishes with two hands behind. So if you want to get used to that finish before you start to go all the way through it, you can start sitting down like this, kick your feet up, and as you push with your hands, you get your butt lifting off the, off the obstacle, and then you push back with your hands as you point your feet forward. So it goes kick, push, just like so. You let your feet drop right away, you're only going to stay so close, you won't get very far. So the higher you lift your feet, and the stronger you can push with those hands, the more distance you can cover focusing on technique. But here's the progression real quick. You're gonna go up in that safety setup. When you bring that leg through, all you're gonna do from here is not sit down, but think about replacing that foot with the hand that's up. So think about those motions happening at the same time. As your hand goes down, that foot comes out, and that motion happens together. When you do that, you don't wanna go so high when you're going over to where you come down slamming on your wrist. You want to plant with control. So don't think about going here, think about going here. Plant it with control. That way, as that foot pushes back to go forward and your hand comes here, you center yourself out straight and you fall through just like that. And it might take some time, so practice it a little bit. If you want to, you can even practice it on the ground. When practicing it on the ground, go into your safety position here like so. Get that leg through and work on going to that, then back, to that, then back. This foot won't have to stay on the ground since when you're in the vault box, this leg, this leg will be in the air. But working on getting that plant and getting comfortable with that motion, that could do a great deal for you before you go over the vault box. And just like with the other vaults, as you get more comfortable with it, you fall through a little bit quicker. So you go one, two, three. Or you can break it down into another sequence if that's too fast. You can even go one, two, three, and four coming out. And then as it gets smoother and smoother, you work on tapping that foot lighter and lighter, focusing on how you're lifting your hips, supporting with that hand, and transitioning to that second hand after your feet pass forward. And you can lift your feet completely over the box and go straight to that hand. But again, remember, you don't want to plant it firm. The harder you hit that hand, ah, the more it's going to steam. So practice that control and work on going tap and plant. Tap and plant. And eventually, you won't need to tap the foot and you can pop right on over. 
If that transition there wouldn't be enough for you, you can practice on the ground by starting two hands in front, swinging your feet around the side, and then working on getting your feet in front and that second hand back. And you go back. Plant and back. Plant and back. Plant and back. Getting used to starting from this upright position and finishing in this position. It's all about keeping those hips level and not going up and down, but swinging your hips and feet around flat, not over too high like an arch. So that is pretty much my video on helping you guys learn how to get over obstacles, wall boxes, walls. If I have not helped, please let me know. You can even send me a message on my Facebook fan page and I will do my best to respond. I usually try and respond within the first two or three days. And you can send me a video of your attempts and I can see what you're doing wrong, give you more tips to help you progress. On the progression note, use the progressions that I mentioned in these tutorials. Don't go straight for the advanced one and then risk it for the biscuit and get injured. Take your time, get familiar with the motions, that way you can stay safe. The better you practice, the more often you practice these movements, the more likely they will stay with you for the rest of your life. These aren't skills that you have to know, but they can be useful even if you don't stay with parkour. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't be afraid to come back to this video and listen for tips that maybe you missed out on the last time you watched it. And share it. Sharing these videos helps me. It helps the other guys out there who haven't found tutorials on how to start off with parkour. And yeah, thanks for watching. Take great care. And as always, stay positive.